Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Daniel Groves. My major project focuses on spectroscopy in relation to determining the habitability of a planet. Hey, I'm Gerardo, and my research is about the addition of aluminum silicates in concrete. My name is Mary, and my research is basically just comparing biosignatures and anti-biosignatures to determine the habitability of an exoplanet. I am Thomas Lloyd, and uh, I decided to look at how I can optimize a drone so it can fly in Mars like it does on Earth. I wonder how many of us have been prescribed a course of antibiotics, gotten up to day six of day 10, infections cleared up, and we've sort of just left the antibiotics in the medicine cabinet, collecting dust as we speak. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one way in which we are propagating antimicrobial resistance in our society. We can see here, this is from the Jim O'Neill report in 2014, commissioned by the UK government. This statistic over here is what really entrapped me into the idea of looking at antimicrobial resistance. You can see the exponential growth which is projected to occur with antimicrobial resistance projected to kill 100 million people per year by 2050. My research in particular looks at combination therapy. So there's two diff main types of combination therapies. We have a synergistic combination therapy, which is antibiotics and bacteriophages together. And then we have a staggered approach or a two-phase or order is other terms used by the literature, um, which is where we introduce antibiotics first and then bacteriophages afterwards. Now, advantages and disadvantages come about um, but the main advantage that the synergistic approach has is that it's a shorter time frame. So I did a meta-analysis using F-tests uh, to compare the data sets from two different papers which I've cited up here. And we can see from the uh, p-value in, in test number six, we have a significant difference with an alpha value um, established of 0.05 that one of these two treatments was much more effective than the other. Good evening, staff, students and parents. Today I'll be talking to you about azo-resistant aspergillus. Efflux pumps um, basically control movements of substances inside and outside of cells. So azoles work by entering the cell and accumulating inside. The way that it works is by accumulating inside and then that builds up the toxins which essentially causes cell death. Bringing it back to my inquiry question, how does the emergence of clinical azo-resistant aspergillus in Australia compare to overseas? I concluded that the resistance in Australia still remains fairly low in comparison to overseas countries. And especially given that Australia is an island, I think that it's an imperative and um, important to monitor and conduct further research to prevent increasing resistance and clinical implications. Thank you. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Just wow. Congratulations. I felt like I was a student sitting in a fourth year university biomedical lecture. Your communication skills are brilliant. I'm watching a future researcher before my eyes. It's just wow. Wow. Thank you.